Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I've been on the lookout for a high quality, good value key light for lighting my YouTube videos. Now I'm just starting out as a channel, so I didn't want to spend about a thousand pounds on the Aperture 120D that everyone seems to have and the light dome that comes with that. So instead I had a look around, did some research on the internet and found this, which is the Pixel C100. And this is a daylight balanced light, similar in a lot of ways to the Aperture, but is it any good? And why is it almost three times cheaper than the Aperture? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Andy, and you may have seen my review of the Godox VL150, which I did last week. If you haven't already watched that video, do check it out above here or down in the description below. I'll try and link it up. In that review, I also talked about this pixel and that review was actually lit by this light for most of it. And a lot of you have actually been asking me in the comments on that video to do a comparison between this and the Godox, which is lighting this video. So I'm going to talk about this light and what I like about it, what I don't like about it and just do a bit of a quick comparison with the Godox in terms of what you're getting for your money and you can then decide which light is the best light for you. So price-wise, this light sits above cheaper offerings from Godox like the SL60W or the um, Sakani X60. Both of those lights are between about $130 and $180 or pounds if you're in the UK. Um, this light actually comes in at around $250, I think, and more like $260 or £270 pounds in the UK. So it is an extra chunk of cash, but for that extra cash, you get a really nice package, which includes um, this padded carry case, which if you're familiar with Aperture products, looks very similar to the one that you get with the 120D. And it's got really nice padded inserts and feels really good quality. Um, you also get this reflector, which is Bowen's mount, so this light, so it just goes on really nicely and it fits really well once it's on, it's really secure. Um, also in the package you get this remote with it, which is a nice addition and allows you to control the brightness of the light, the groups of lights and channel if you've got multiple lights that you're controlling. It also, in my opinion, gets you a slightly higher build quality. So this light is made up of mainly metal and uh, kind of rigid hard plastic. So for example, the body of the light where the fan is and kind of the, the outer casing is mainly this kind of nice aluminium finish. The yoke is nice and solid as well and that's metal and it's really, really nicely put together as well. You also get like nice solid handle and the back of the light is fairly good quality touch buttons. The only thing that lets it down slightly is this um, brightness knob, which is a bit plasticky and not very nice. Um, and then you've got a handle here that tightens up really nicely as well. So because it's made of those materials, it's quite lightweight for its size. It comes in at about 1.8 kilos. Compared to, for example, the Godox um, VL150, that is a slightly heavier light and it does feel a little bit higher quality, but it comes in just over 2.2 kilos, so there's not a huge difference. Another nice little touch that I really like is the fact that the um, light comes with this little cage that you can um, hang the power brick in so that you can hang that onto your light stand or wherever you've got the light set up, which means that the shorter part of the cabling that attaches to the light doesn't then have too much weight dangling off the back of the light because you can actually hang that hanger close to the light on the light stand and then you've got a nice long section of cable below that. So this is the cheapest version of this light which is rated at 80 watts. There are also 140 and 220 watt versions which obviously go up in price as you go up the higher power. I'll um, drop some links in the description below to all three of the lights if you want to check them out. Obviously, it's going to depend on what your needs are as to whether you need that extra power. But 
basically the other two lights are very very similar if not exactly the same in terms of build and size and quality to this one obviously being 80 watts it's not going to be as bright as those lights and it's not as bright as the godox which is a 150 watt light so i've used a light meter to do some tests on the brightness of this light versus the godox and I'll put some numbers up on the screen now which give you an idea of the brightness versus other lights in this category. I don't own all of these lights but I'm using the advertised brightness for the ones that I don't own. So if you're just using this light with a softbox or modifier of some sort in a kind of small room like this, so this is my home office which I use for my YouTube videos, it's not a massive room um, but I've used this light for uh, recording videos and it, it works perfectly for that you don't really need it to be brighter I've only gone up to about probably 35% with this light so far and that lit and exposed the video is absolutely fine I think you would only really need the extra brightness if it was a much larger room or if you were trying to do something maybe outside where you needed that extra light output so this light's actually rated at 97 CRI and 99 TLCI. So you can rest assured that it's going to be pretty colour accurate and I've actually been really impressed with it so far. I think it actually gives a really nice flattering quality of light and actually probably slightly nicer in terms of straight out of the box than the Godox. I feel like I've had to tweak camera settings and also the amount of diffusion on the Godox probably a little bit more than this light. So it's really nice that you can just get set up quickly and get going with this light and you're gonna get a really nice quality of light coming out of it if you're using a decent modifier. I've actually been using the Nice Photo um, Light Dome, which I'll, I'll put a link in the description below. I'll also link up a few other light domes that I think are really good, like the Aperture Light Dome Mark II, and also um, there's a couple of other cheaper ones that I'll, um, I'll put links to as well that are on Amazon. So overall, I think we can say that this light's gonna give you a really good quality and nice soft light. As I said, it's Bowen's mount compatible, which means you can put any kind of modifier onto here, whether that's barn doors, a Fresnel, um, a light dome, anything really that you can think of will go on here if it's Bowen's mount. And the mount is actually really solid and it seems like things fit on here really well without wobbling around. So on the back of the light, you have all of the controls for the light. So you've got your light group, channel, brightness. You can dim this light from 100% down to 1% in 1% increments. And the last output settings are actually saved on the light when you turn it off and even when you unplug it for a short time, which is really nice actually. It also has a button to adjust the brightness level in 25% steps and also a, a sync button to sync with the remote if you've got out of sync. If you've got only one light, you can actually use the um, groups button. There's six groups, A, B, C, D, E, F, and you can actually set different brightness levels to each of those groups and then use them as presets which I've been doing and it works really well because you can just set whatever you want and then just quickly tap a button and you're onto your next preset and you've upped the light by 20 or 40 percent or whatever you've set it to. Um, it works in a similar way to the 25 percent button but it's just a bit more customizable. So the brightness control dial actually has a button in the middle of it which you can also press to override the fans on the light and it'll actually um, intelligently automatically manage that fan and it'll only come on when it's really needed which is a really nice feature and means that you're not getting fan noise in your videos and actually it's quiet enough that you wouldn't notice the noise anyway. Generally I've got my microphone a good few feet away from where the fan would be on the light and I never pick up any noise from it. The noises I do pick up sometimes in this office are actually from my computer and the hard drives that are whirring away in the background. The other thing I really like about this light is the fact that it has a 
power cord that has a locking mechanism so it stops it accidentally getting pulled out if you're on set with it walking around the light. Now an added bonus that you get with this light which you don't get with the Godox is that if you press and hold I think it's the channel button you get um, three lighting modes which come up and they're like scene lighting so I think it's trying to recreate like lightning and then I think the third scene mode is meant to recreate like if you were watching TV or something. Um, but it's nice to have, and at this kind of price point, it's really impressive that they've included that on this light. The other thing that's good about the remote on this light is that this allows you to actually go all the way down to 1% on the remote, whereas the Godox, I think because it's based on other lights that use that remote, like the SL60W, doesn't allow you to go below 10%, or I haven't managed to do it yet. So that's something to note if you're thinking about using the remote a lot to control the light. So, so far the light seems really good value for money and a really good purchase, but there are a few things I want to talk about that I don't like about this light and the reasons why I'm actually going to be sending this one back and keeping the Godox. So the first of these, which was the big reason that I actually ordered the Godox after I'd ordered this one, is that the Godox can be powered by battery and it's actually um, V-mount compatible. Whereas this light can't be powered by batteries at all, it, it can only be plugged into the mains. Obviously, you might not need battery power, that might be a function that you're not interested in if you're just using it in a studio, but for me, I do take it out on commercial shoots where I need it to be powered by batteries, so it was important to me to have that feature. The other thing that I've noticed on this light is that the um, lever that locks down the yoke in position just isn't quite as robust as on the Godox. The Godox one's really nice. This is more similar to an aperture, but it's quite plasticky and it does feel like over time it could be something that would be the thing to break first on the light. Um, and actually it's a bit of a letdown on this because the rest of the light is really well built. The other thing that this light won't do is fully rotate because that handle there stops it rotating within the yoke. Um, the aperture doesn't have that issue and I don't think the Godox does either because of the design of the handles. They're a lot more compact. There's a few other little weird things like the dials on both the remote and also on here just feel a bit weird and aren't quite as nice to use as some of the other lights including the Godox. Also the brightness dial on the back of the light, the faster you turn it, the quicker the light goes up. So you have to turn it really slow to actually get it to go kind of down in 1% increments. So I think really I'm just nitpicking and actually overall it's very impressive how good the quality of this light is for the money that you're spending. If I didn't need a light with battery power as an option, I think this would be perfect and that's why I bought it in the first place. You can go a cheaper route and get things like the SL60W or maybe the X60 from Sakani. There's loads of little lights out there but a lot of them do suffer from either major fan noise or really rubbish build quality, things like that. And actually, you don't get any of those issues with this light, I've found. So definitely one to consider if you're looking to buy a high quality, fairly budget light that isn't going to break the bank and will help you to up your production quality for your YouTube videos or any other work you're doing with this kind of lighting. So I hope you found the information in this video helpful. If you have, please do give it a thumbs up below and also consider subscribing to the channel. I'm going to be bringing a lot more filmmaking and photography content in the coming weeks. And if you do want to know anything about this light or the Godox or any of the other lights I've talked about, just drop me a comment below and I'll try and answer them as best I can. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.